So, before the classes began, I said explicitly, you've all got to sign up. So everyone has to be doing Twitter. Um, you have to sign up, uh, and I suggested that they find, found some brands or products or personalities that they found interesting, followed them just to get a sense of what it is people were doing, um, and retweet one or two, including a, a hashtag. Is everybody enough, familiar enough with Twitter to know what I mean by a hashtag? To make it searchable. So I, could, I didn't want to follow them, I didn't want to stalk their lives, but I wanted to see what they were doing by following the tweets with that hashtag. hashtag. And to build my brand equity as well, Brighton Business School Digital Marketing, hopefully it now has some persona of its own on, in the Twitter sphere. Um, that wasn't terribly successful. I got a few tweets, um, typical would be Mei Tang saying, uh, the formatting has gone a little bit strange in this version of uh, that one. Mei Tang saying, officially joining the Twitter bandwagon, digital, PBS digital mark bandwagon, now what to tweet? They, there was a great sense of, well, I've been asked to do it, I'm here, but what, what's it for? Um, some immediately started to look around and point at content, uh, but Joe Walters is a, is, is a mature student, and I think I saw quite a, whereas uh, Maitang is, I, I would guess, 21 or 22 years old, a very big difference between those who felt they had something to say and those who were just saying, oh, I'm here because I've been told to do it. Then I gave a more structured activity. I pointed them at a, uh, an academic journal article that I use quite a lot in teaching by um, Elizabeth Daniel, a UK researcher from the East Anglia, um, who'd done some quite good work on integrating marketing and information systems. Um, and they were much more comfortable with this. I'm here, I began to be quite pleased. I, the heart of the article was this model. And I just gave them the article. It was a typical journal article, it was 25 pages long, with uh, four or five pages of reference, a lot of very intense literature review, a theoretical model with some explanation of methodology, and then a long um, application and justification of the model. Not dry reading, um, quite decontextualized, a model that might mean almost anything when you look at it, and it's got a lot of different boxes and arrows in it. The kinds of tweets I got back were Doixi saying things like model equals simplified aspects of mass processes, method equals too mecha mechanical for adopt adaption, missing, unable to start, non-ground up. May Tang, the earlier been saying, I don't know what I'm going to say, said, model, very difficult, detailed and difficult to grasp, method, poor sample, missing, better explanation for those who aren't familiar with the context. I think, uh, looking at these tweets, I probably did suggest you want you might want to think about things like what the model offers, what's missing, <laughs> <laughs> and whether the methodology has any legitimacy. We may we may see an imposed structure on these tweets related to um, uh, and Gia Jade saying this map's quite confusing. It's good theory, but it's more So I, I mean, whilst <laughs> I can hear in your laugh that you immediately spotted, yeah, they've been provided with a framework, uh, what things to think about. I felt that they must have read the article to be able to say that much, and that in 140 characters they are summing up some strengths and weaknesses. Certainly, the sample that the model is based on it was actually based on only seven interviews, which is a very small sample set to generate such a large and complex model that purports to be a generalizable map of marketing. During the class, I typically taught by getting the students to work in groups to discuss something, to research something, and then to blog about it. So for example, I asked them to find um, blogs about products and services and um, products and services organizations that they were interested in, but to find multiple blogs. So uh, as an example, I said to them, if you're interested in Manchester United, I ju don't just want the official Manchester United football blog. I'd like to try and find a blog by perhaps uh, a manager, and one by a fan, and perhaps one by a journalist or a professional pundit, and think about the different things that the blog is doing and how that relates to things like the, the building of the brand. And I suggested they classified them according to a scheme that doesn't seem to have formatted very well here, but it included things, but I just, I just gave you this for some kinds of contexts. Uh, people are professionally in the field, uh, press releases, journalistic cover, product information, those kinds of things. Um, and here I began to see the synergy between getting them blogging and getting them using Twitter to link to their blogs and, and, and encourage each other to look at each other's blogs working quite well. So Steve um, Rowland wrote the blog entry that I've um, screenshotted on the right. So he's got these 
clusters as a group. They thought about Apple, Apple, Toyota, the NHS, and Coca-Cola. So a nice, quite a nice spread of different um, uh, industries or, or products or services to consider the, the, the use of blogging for. But what, what was nice was that by posting their tweets about where the blog was, they began to get people, other students, finding their blogs, reading them, making comments, and then saying, I looked at your blog. And this was happening in real time. So over the course of a two-hour class, I might see a group of 24 students generating eight or 10 blog postings between them and notifying each other through the Twitter sphere, and then uh, looking, reading, and commenting. So it was working as a tool for, uh, not for assessment, but for drawing their attention back and forth between what they're doing and what other students were doing. After the class, uh, I suggested that they should continue to use um, uh, Twitter as a way of building a resource base for the writing that they had to do. And I wanted them to find academic and practitioner articles. And I specifically said you should aim to find at least five academic articles and five practitioner articles that you can um, explain why there is some interest to your fellow students um, and, and share them, as well as going and finding each other's blogs and commenting on them afterwards. And this seems to work really quite well uh, over a period. Um, I've only got to find a few of the tweets because the way that Twitter archives, you can't search for old hashtags. So unless I go and follow individual students, it's quite hard to go back and find things months later. Uh, so I said a few students, there were, there were actually about 100 students on the module and all of them tweeted quite heavily, but I've, I've selected my quotes from a few of them. Um, but I mean, Jade, who earlier on had said of the journal article I pointed her at, uh, difficult to understand, was effectively finding quite useful, quite advanced research, very current, published in September of the year. This, would, this tweet would have taken place about um, March of 2011, with a, a reasonably succinct um, uh, summation of why or who we might, who, oh, to which students it would be interested, in other words, by showing that it's about biomarking and which types of people send the messages on from a very relevant journal. Um, Talked down uh, examples of PDFs that you could download with principles that were much more sort of focused on what you're actually going to do because I was trying to get them to get a balance between practitioner perspectives and the more sort of analytic academic approach to things. Um, Steve Rowland or Digital Roundup being my best practice. Uh, and Joe put a lot of tags on delicious, so she actually went and bookmarked lots of pages uh, with delicious, which is a bookmark sharing system tagged them with BBS pitch market and then invited other students to go and look through. By the end of the module between 100 students, they built a list of more than 1,000 resources that they could find easily by searching on that hashtag 